Neanderthals and Denisovans are closely related ancient humans, but what are some of the key differences between these two evolutionary cousins? One skull from China may be the first Denisovan skull, though it is popularly known as Dragon Man. Um, so here I am with my first impression uh, of this replica of the Harbin skull, and uh, first impression is just the sheer size of it. It's enormous. So overall, you know, almost a, a more sapiens look to the rear of the skull in, in rear view, but certainly very long and low, but with a retracted face. So a new mix of characteristics that we haven't seen before in a fossil human from anywhere, um, and very surprising in, in something that's from northeast China. So a remarkable find. Denisovans and Neanderthals separated 390 to 440,000 years ago, and their ancestor, split from our lineage between 520 and 630,000 years ago, though these dates are still subject to debate, with other tests suggesting Denisovans split from our lineage closer to 800,000 years ago. Denisovans are members of a hominin group, who are currently only known directly from fragmentary fossils, the genomes of which have been studied from a single site the Denisova cave in Siberia. They are also known indirectly from their genetic legacy through gene flow into several low-altitude East Asian populations and high-altitude modern Tibetans. But the lack of morphologically informative Denisovan fossils hinders the ability to connect geographically and temporally dispersed fossil hominins from Asia and to understand their relation to recent Asian populations. This includes understanding the genetic adaptation of humans to the high-altitude Tibetan plateau, which was inherited from the Denisovans. A partial Denisovan mandible, known as the Shahe mandible, identified by ancient protein analysis, was found on the Tibetan plateau in western China. Scientists determined the mandible to be at least 160,000 years old, through U-series dating of a carbonate matrix. The mandible provides direct evidence of the Denisovans outside the Altai Mountains, and unique insights into Denisovan morphology. The results of the study, published in a paper titled, A Late Middle Pleistocene Denisovan Mandible from the Tibetan Plateau, indicate that archaic hominins occupied the Tibetan Plateau in the Middle Pleistocene Epoch, and successfully adapted to high-altitude hypoxic environments long before the regional arrival of modern Homo sapiens. In another study, titled Reconstructing Denisovan Anatomy Using DNA Methylation Maps, scientists presented a method for reconstructing skeletal morphology using DNA methylation patterns. Their method is based on linking unidirectional methylation changes to loss of function phenotypes, according to the scientists. In fact, it was shown that Native Americans inherited a lip shaped gene from Denisovans. In a genome-wide association study, an international team of scientists identified 32 gene regions that influence facial features such as nose, lip, jaw, and brow shape, nine of which were entirely new discoveries while the others validated genes with prior limited evidence. Remarkably, one of these genes appears to have been inherited from Denisovans, who are informally called Homo sapiens altiensis or Homo altiensis. Scientists concluded that the method can be used to identify phenotypic divergence between closely related hominids. Even though they validated this approach on Neanderthals and chimpanzees, as well as on the Denisovan jawbone, its ultimate test would be to match the reconstructed profile to a more complete collection of Denisovan samples, once they are discovered. Interestingly, that may have just happened with the description of the dragon man skull from northeast China. The mandible of the dragon man is not known, but the phylogenetic analyses suggest that the harbin cranium, as the dragon man skull is also known, and the Shahe mandible form a sister group. The size of the harbin cranium matches the tooth size of the Shahe mandible. It is reasonable to deduce that the harbin cranium probably matches a mandible as robust as the Shahe mandible and without a chin, according to the authors of the report. Moreover, the sister relationship between the Harbin skull and Shahe mandible, as identified by Bayesian inference, is particularly interesting. The Shahe mandible shows some features of the Denisovans, and sediments from the cave have yielded Denisovan mitochondrial DNA. The teeth of Harbin skull also matches the known permanent Denisovan molars in size and root morphology, and, 
Ever since the discovery of Denisovans, Asian Middle Pleistocene hominins have been suspected to represent an East Asian population of the Denisovans. Given the sister group relationship between the Harbin cranium and the Shahe mandible, it is possible that both specimens belong to the dragon man, aka Homo longi. Further human fossils from the Middle Pleistocene of China and neighboring areas will test this idea, says Chris Stringer. The scientists also suggest that instead of a simple out-of-Africa model, a multidirectional shuttle dispersal model is more likely to explain the complex phylogenetic connections among African and Eurasian hominid populations. I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members, who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration, to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. I recently completed a course titled Creative Video Storytelling and Editing by graphic designer and video editor Nikki Stevens to help level up my own video editing skills and how to effectively use stock video footage to improve my storytelling. If you are interested in making a career pivot or upleveling your skills, Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers and entrepreneurs to help you learn new skills to support your side hustle or launch into a totally new career. Give Skillshare a try, and the first 1000 people to use my exclusive link in the video description will get a one month free trial. Scientists tested performance of the method by reconstructing Neanderthal and chimpanzee skeletal morphologies, and obtained greater than 85% precision in identifying divergent traits. They then applied this method to the Denisovan, and suggested a unique morphological profile. They suggest that Denisovans likely shared with Neanderthals traits such as an elongated face and a wide pelvis. They also identify Denisovan-derived changes such as an increased dental arch, and lateral cranial expansion. The predictions match the only Denisovan bone to date, as well as a 100,000-year-old skull from China, which was suggested by some to also be a Denisovan. They concluded that DNA methylation can be used to reconstruct anatomical features, including some that do not survive in the fossil record. Yet, very little is known about the anatomy of Denisovans. The first specimen, Denisova III, comprises a phalanx found in the Denisova cave in Siberia, dated between 74 and 82,000 years ago. DNA extracted from this bone indicated that this individual belonged to a sister group of Neanderthals, which they dubbed Denisovans. Based on this genome, Denisovan ancestry of up to 6% was detected in present-day Melanesians and Aboriginal Australians and to a lesser level in East Asians, Native Americans, and Polynesians. Some of these Denisovan haplotypes might have conferred modern humans an adaptive advantage in high altitude and cold climates. But despite our growing understanding of their genetics, findings that provide information on Denisovan anatomy remain scarce. The only confirmed Denisovan samples hitherto are the aforementioned Denisova III phalanx, from which a 30x genome was sequenced, a lower jawbone, and several teeth. Anatomical studies of the teeth reveal that the Denisovan molars differ in their cusp and root morphology, and their size is outside the range of modern humans, and mostly outside the range of Neanderthals too. The jawbone was shown to be robust, protruding, with a long dental arcade and no chin. Unlike the Neanderthal skeletal profile, which can be matched against fossil evidence, the Denisovan profile can only be validated with regard to the mandible and teeth. According to the paper, the prediction accuracy for traits such as skin, hair, and eye pigmentation exceeds 80% in Europeans, but for the vast majority of traits, predictions reach substantially lower accuracy levels, including in facial morphology. Scientists quantified the accuracy of the method by applying it to the Neanderthal and the chimpanzee and then comparing their predictions with the known morphology of these groups. They show that they reach prediction precision of 82.8% .8 in reconstructing traits that separate Neanderthals and modern humans and 87.9% in predicting their direction of change. In the chimpanzee, 
they reach a similar performance, with 90.5% precision at predicting which traits are divergent, and 90.9% in predicting their direction of change. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do me a favor and click that big red button now, so you don't miss any groundbreaking content. Interestingly, many of the Denisovan traits they reconstructed were identified in Middle and Late Pleistocene fossils from China. These fossils display various Neanderthal-like characteristics, but their phylogenetic classification remains undetermined. Probably the most Neanderthal-like are the 100,000 to 130,000-year-old crania from eastern China. The similarity of these crania to those of Neanderthals, together with their eastern geographical location, raise the possibility that they might belong to Denisovans. But, without DNA, this could not be confirmed. Several observations support the notion that the majority of the reconstructed traits are shared throughout the Denisovan population. In the fossil record, it has been shown that traits that separate a single Neanderthal fossil from modern humans tend to be shared by all Neanderthals. Roughly half of the reconstructed traits are based on traits that emerged along the modern human lineage. Because such traits are derived in modern humans, Denisovans are expected to share the ancestral form of the trait. The analysis is based on traits that are unaffected by age, gender, or bone type, and therefore, a Denisovan individual from a different age and gender and where the sample was obtained from another bone type is expected to exhibit similar trait patterns. It is illuminating that although the reconstruction accuracy levels for the Neanderthal and chimpanzee are very similar, the fraction of known derived traits that have an equivalent phenotype are markedly different. For the Neanderthal, 75 out of 107 derived traits, or 70%, have a parallel phenotype, whereas for the chimpanzee, where divergence is 10 times deeper, the fraction is significantly lower, 83 out of 201, or 41%. Given that the divergence time between Denisovans and modern humans equals that between Neanderthals and modern humans, it is likely that the fraction of Denisovan traits that scientists can predict using phenotypes is very high, and similar to that in Neanderthals. Thus, scientists demonstrated that using these assumptions, they are able to reconstruct dozens of the traits that differ between these three human groups with over 80% accuracy.